Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Well, hello everybody, and hello to you. Welcome to yet another episode of the Locker Gnome Daily Report, TLDR for short, and I know that uh, everybody's been waiting all week for this day because it's Friday, not because they enjoy singing songs about Friday, although I, I know a few of you do. You may have to check into a clinic if that Gets to be too much of a problem. I also have our Nomi's Comic of the Week, just created uh, by Kelly Ishikawa, uh, written by Kevin Gilmartin and myself. Uh, and you can, of course, write your own comic strip that Kelly will illustrate if you join us at nomis.com. Uh, you can download this image in case you're squinting to see what it has, uh, you know, there in the, the, the bubbles, which I'll read in a second. Uh, I posted it to my Facebook account, Google Plus account, Flickr. It's all over the place. Uh, so it's me here and Diana, and I'm saying this isn't the kind of laser eye surgery I had in mind, but I like it. In fact, uh, Diana here uh, down below, she hasn't even seen this comic yet. Uh, she she just got home from uh, more errands, and she may be joining us during this live broadcast. But isn't that hilarious? I finally got laser eye surgery. You can download the full image, and of course, you can join us at nomies.com if you want to submit your own gag that Kelly will illustrate for you and for the rest of the world. And uh, you can also join us here in this live chat room. Uh, this is IRC. All Nomies have the opportunity to join. Uh, let's go ahead and welcome Brian. Browser Nerd, Metall Metallic X Squink, X Centers of Strike, Joe Izzard, Alberto Lopez, Fazal, Real 2T, Ben Tar, Poimo, Team Wardo, Yamazaro Ninja, Tyler Bietka, Austin L. Allen, Christian T, Foxy Wolf, JK11, uh, Jessica Kim, This Damn Scotsman, Jack P, Crazy Tika, Blue Gator, Burroughs, Zarlak, and I'm sure even more. And if I missed your name in there, I apologize. And to all of you who have tuned in live on YouTube, thank you for the comments already and the likes. Wow, we're already up to three whole likes. That's not bad. Really, I would have hoped for more, but I'll take what I can get. Uh, Jackie Cluxton, hello, welcome. Hyperwolf3700 there on YouTube. Handball courts, how to meet girls, one radical dude. Tago L. Tun. You guys are just amazing people. Thank you for joining us for the live broadcast. And if you didn't get your name called out there. Maybe there's a chance if you tune into the next live broadcast that we do since we do this every weekday right around 3 p.m. Pacific. And then after today's uh, TLDR, we're going to be doing our uh, live Google Plus Nomi's Hangout tonight's topic of discussion, business failures and how you can learn more from business failures than you can their successes. You can join us if you register right now at nomies.com. It's really kind of easy. But even if you don't want to register, you're obviously listening and participating on YouTube or beyond. We'll be broadcasting that video so you can watch it happening live. You can tune in at any time at live.perillo.com uh, and participate with people who have joined us there. Uh, they're talking back and forth and you can talk in chat. And even if you're not one of the Nomies, you're still, I would say, one of us. A greater part of one of us because you are great. There's your self-esteem boost for the day even if you're not great. I'm just going to say that you're great and, and call it a day. Well, actually, I'm just beginning. <laughs> I, I, have, I can't really call it a day because it hasn't really started. So now that I've told you what to stay tuned for today after this full broadcast, this full video, uh, and we've talked about the likes, let's go ahead and like this video. Uh, I'm going to do it because if I like this video, a little button pops up, the plus one button, and if I plus one it, just like Brian Miner, Stacey Ferris, Skylar Johnson, Sean Jordan, and Kat Shaw have, uh, I'm going to publicly plus one it. On Google Plus. You can do that too. So if you circled me on Google Plus, if you press plus one, other people will know that you're watching me live and potentially you as well. So I'm also going to say as a comment, stream all the things because that's a meme that I'm going with today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and also post this on uh, Facebook uh, up to 53,000 likes there. That's kind of cool. Or subscribers really, not really saying that those subscribers like me. You don't have to like me to follow me. And that's true, because I've got over 100,000 of you right over there on Twitter. I'm going to go ahead and tweet out the same link. If you click that link, that'll take you to the page where you can also like the video. If you don't see the option to like, you're on the wrong page. And, you know, I know many of you tune in live, hundreds, actually. I think the mo I mean, we've had a lot, depending on the topic at hand. But uh, one of the... Uh, 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 
I'd say on average, when I looked at the statistics, one of the, the numbers that jumped out was right around 300 people tune in live, which I would say is pretty decent. Uh, probably more than the average television show, uh, to tell you the truth. And, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, it, it's good to have engagement for the live f- uh, show when, when you like it especially. But if you can go back and you can also like the separate videos that uh, we upload, that we carve out from these video segments, I have a feeling you're going to do that for a couple of them. Uh, and it, it's going to be fun today. It's going to be a roller coaster ride. Let me just tell you what you uh, can stay tuned for. Uh, we've got our Hackintosh computers legal. Uh, how to get a refund fr- refund from the App Store, although refund, that's kind of interesting. Uh, a Fellows Inc. Power Shred 79CI Paper Shredder Review and Giveaway Notice. And with that video, I'm going to be shredding my copy of Windows Millennium Edition that I remember paying about $80, $90, $100 for back in the day. I, I, I installed it, and two days later... Uh, I uninstalled it, went to Windows 98, and then a week later went to Windows 2000. Uh, So I will be shredding my copy of Windows Millennium Edition in that shredder in today's episode. Uh, We also have top 10 photography iPhone apps uh, in iDrive. Uh, We have an independent review, uh, someone who was very happy to get the Nomi's 25 gigs for life. Uh, I guess it was a bargain. It wasn't really even a discount. I mean, you get it as a Nomi, 25 gigs for free from iDrive. So if if nothing else, this serves as a, a reminder of why you should be backing things up even online. And then we're going to be covering Gages versus Google, a web analytics showdown of sorts. Uh, If you didn't realize, there are many services you could use beyond Google Analytics to track uh, people coming to your site, visiting. In fact, uh, it might be interesting for me to pull up, when we get to that point, uh, Google Analytics. So if you visit LockerGnome.com at the time that I'm running that, uh, the numbers will jump up and I will see how many people are watching me live uh, using Google Analytics tied into LockerGnome.com. So we have quite a few things to cover. Let me go ahead and uh, get this staged and ready to go because we're going to start out by talking about, or with talking about, uh, actually, we're going to start out talking about uh, our Hackintosh computers legal. And to do so, we're going to be bringing in Matt Ryan. And Matt, are you about ready? Theoretically. Unless I cover the mic. He- I'm ready. Okay, give me a second, and do, do, do. It's a popular question we're asked frequently enough to answer. Are Hackintosh computers legal or illegal? So we did some research and uh, you know, really whittled it down to the most important parts of what could very well get you in trouble. Certainly not something you want to talk about or brag about because, uh, yeah, it's kind of a hot topic. Uh, We covered it in the the link that you might find there in the video's description if you don't see this video embedded on the page itself. The thing I want to uh, let you guys know about before going any further with this, uh, we want to make this disclaimer right up front. The question being answered isn't whether or not it's right or ethical to build a Hackintosh. The question is whether or not, it's potentially illegal to do so. Completely different things. You may think you should be able to do it, but the law may not be on your side. So we've got a handful of questions as we answered in in depth in the article, and I'd strongly recommend if you're interested in Hackintoshing or you've heard about people Hackintoshing, you send them the link, not just to the video, but the article too. Uh, We'll start out with the first question, Matt. Is it legal to sell a Hackintosh? Uh, Simply put, no. Uh, and if you've heard about a company called uh, Psystar, uh, that's P-S-Y-S-T-A-R, uh, uh, they actually lost in court uh, when they attempted to sell a computer that was even capable of running OS X. Okay, so the greater question people might ask, don't I own the software? Actually, according to the uh, EULA, you're licensing the software from Apple. Even if you have a physical disk, you own your copy of OS X. So you can't really do anything with it if they say that you can't do anything with it. Exactly. It's, it's very, very strict what you can and can't do with their software, though they do allow you to do a lot of things like, for example, virtual uh, machines. You can install OS X on up to two virtual PCs, but you have to do that on a machine that's already running the same software. Okay, so you can't sell them. That, that duh. Uh, what about if... You want to make one just for yourself or maybe for a friend and and not sell what you've put together. 
Well, uh, the the article here it 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 targets is this legal or not, and the basic answer to it is no. Because you are breaking an end user license agreement, you are actually affecting copyright, uh, the digital uh, copyright or the Millennium Act, all of those things. Apple actually would have grounds to sue you on. So I would say it's illegal in that case. The D Digital Millennium Copyright Act, the DMCA, is what you're you're talking about there. So what about uh, reverse engineering the code for, quote-unquote, educational reasons? Um, yeah, this is an popular argument. Well, you know, I'm reverse engineering the script, so it's not really their script anymore. Um, actually, it's in the uh, in-user license agreement that you cannot attempt even to reverse engineer the bootloader or the software. Okay, so really, what's the worst can happen? Well, uh, this, for, for the answer to this question, I actually talked to Brett Trout. He's an attorney. Uh, he deals with copyright and patent law. And what he stated is if Apple wants to make an example of you, let's say they do find you, your register or, or some information, your IP address comes through, because OS X does dial home from time to time. If they decide to make an example out of you, it could be extremely expensive, and you will likely not have the money to even go to jury because, man, that is a costly adventure. You're looking at six figures sometimes just to defend yourself in court. So it would be an expensive nightmare for you if they do catch you. And uh, Brett also noted, you quoted him in the article, even if you could get a jury, you run the risk of not being able to convince the retired people on the jury that you are right and Apple is wrong. Exactly, because the jury is going to look at two sides. They're going to see one guy that decided to circumvent a copyright in order to uh, make their computer work in a way that Apple did not intend uh, their software to work. Uh, and then you're going to look at a corporation that has international grounds and a long history of knowing exactly what their software should and shouldn't do. It, it's going to be really hard to tell them that you're in the right. Well, the jury doesn't seem like it's out on this. Uh, it's pretty definitive. Uh, the law isn't on the Hackintoshers' side. Absolutely. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. All right. Kind of broke up there a bit. I don't know. There's some, there's some weird uh, dropping issues of his audio, and it probably could have been uh, something that... Because uh, I'm, I'm connected by way of Wi-Fi here, and I don't think that would really make much of a difference. Wi-Fi seems to run just fine normally. Got one of my access points behind me. It's definitely connected. Obviously, because I had him streaming in. So, uh, how to get a refund from the App Store? Uh, this is a, a good question. Uh, since I have you know hundreds of apps, uh, very rarely have I picked up an app uh, based on reading its description, only to find out that it just did not do what it said it was going to do. And that upsets me, especially if I'm paying a couple dollars. I'm like, oh, it's just a couple bucks. But still. Uh, it's annoying when you spend money on an application and it doesn't work. So let's go ahead and dive into And it. Nomi's, by the way, if you uh, had uh, an experience like this, a bad application, or if you've ever tried to get a, a refund from the App Store, uh, let us know how it went uh, You know, in working with iTunes and, and Apple. And really you, if you're watching uh, this video on YouTube, uh, certainly would appreciate the, uh, um, I, I guess, commentary that you might have if you have experienced anything like this. I'm assuming you guys have apps. There may be thousands upon thousands of apps in any app store, but have you ever purchased an application only to discover that you wasted your money? Did you know you could get a refund? Apple doesn't necessarily make it easy, and really no platform does, but you can get it done. I have uh, requested a refund for spending a couple bucks here, a couple bucks there, on applications that quite frankly, just didn't do what they said they could do. And unfortunately, it was like $2 gone, but still, that's $2 I could have used on an application that did do what it said it was going to do. Uh, and I, of course, read ratings and reviews and certainly go by what you guys might say about any particular app or another. So we've detailed, in case you want to know, how exactly to get a refund in the App Store. Uh, we've, we've put this on LockerGnome.com. The link is in the description, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and plus one it. Uh, so I can share it. Uh, Kat Shaw, Alex Piero, Sean Jordan, Skyler Johnson, and Stacey Ferris have done that as well. Feel free uh, to share it with the people you know as well. Uh, I don't get refunds. I usually read reviews. I've read reviews before, but sometimes they're misleading. Uh, or sometimes uh, Apple has a bug where it says no reviews, and then you get it, and then the 
the app is just junk? Or what if it's a new app and it doesn't have reviews at all, but it still looks like it's something that is promising? The good news is you can get your money back. Uh, we've added the links that you might need uh, or the steps that you would go through specifically with Apple in relation to iTunes, exactly how you would need to get this done. Don't waste your money anymore on bad apps. Don't fear that you're not going to get your money back on an application that just doesn't do what, what it says it's going to do. Apple isn't really giving refunding money that you've spent on an app. They have, however, done it, but it is quite rare. I've never had... I, the two times that I've had a problem with it, uh, n never had an issue getting money refunded. I mean, for a $2 app, and I think the other one was like a $10 app, which was like, wow, that's $10 on an app that just doesn't work. Uh, I have filed for refunds on apps and have always got my money back cool secret spy. So you know it's possible. If you have been stuck with a bad app, we can help you get your money back. Take a look at the link. If you like it, or if you know of anybody else could use the advice, please share. Uh, the, oh, we're going to rock and roll with the uh, shredding of the uh, Windows Millennium Edition here. Give me a second. I should have probably set up the shredder beforehand. Okay, so this is the, the deal. Take a look at that link that's uh, in the description right there for the fellow shredder. We're giving you a chance to, to get one of these in a giveaway. And uh, this is probably a very dangerous thing to do, holding a shredder on my lap here. I don't know if uh, fellows would necessarily go, go for it. Uh, but we're giving one of these things away in conjunction with this review. And I'm going to shred my Windows Millennium, my only Windows Millennium Edition copy. <laughs> Okay, are we, are we ready? And that's the CD, okay. Why do I have a shredder on my lap? Because I'm finally getting rid of my only copy of Windows Millennium Edition. This is the copy that I purchased for right around 100 bucks uh, installed it, and two days later I uninstalled it, went back to Windows 98, and then a week later I went to Windows 2000. Uh, so this is the fellow 79CI, which we reviewed on LockerNome and Chris.Prolo.com. The links are in the description, and you want to look at the links because we're giving one of these away from each one of the blog posts if you leave a comment on each one of them. Uh, so this could be yours. We've gone in depth as to why you may want to have this particular shredder, if only to get rid of your copy of Windows Millennium Edition. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and... You know what? Some some of you would have asked, why didn't I do this with Windows Vista? Uh, because Windows Vista was so bad, I, I got rid of all the copies. I, I, do, I do not have a copy of Vista in the house. Not even a virtual copy. It's, a, it's actually a bad word. You have to put like a penny in the bad word jar every time they... And now I owe the bad word jar $54. Okay, here we go. Here it goes. Theoretically, if I get it in the right slot. Oh, hey, hang on. I gotta flip this thing over. Give me a second. Okay. Good luck! Remember, check out the links in the description. You can get your own copy of Windows Mullet. I mean, <clears throat> your own shredder if you're lucky enough to be chosen at random. <sighs> it's just strangely satisfying. That's. Don't you think? I mean, doesn't that yeah, kind of cathartic, really, to tell you the truth? I feel good about having done that. Don't you? Does that? <laughs> I didn't know you can get a refund on what? Windows Millennium Edition? That was my refund. And honestly, it was worth doing. For, for $100, it was worth doing that to the, the only Windows Millennium Edition disc I have. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm better now, really. I'm not kidding. I, I'm very happy. Don't worry. That will be a separate video uh, posted to the YouTube channel uh, today or uh, and or tomorrow. Uh, let's go ahead. And now that I have uh, told you about the refund in the App Store, um, it, you guys are checking. You guys are leaving a comment in the blog post, right? Because you can get a chance to get your own copier or not copy. It's not a copier. It's actually a D copier. If you can call a shredder a D copier. Where's my grape juice plus? Uh, not here right now. Let's go ahead. 
and dive into the next uh, wonderful laundry list of applications that might be out there uh, and talk about our favorite camera applications. And actually, the one, my favorite camera app, didn't even make the cut. <sighs> All right, hang on just a second. Give me a second. Say cheese! I just took your picture. I used an application that's one of my favorite camera applications, something called ClearCam. It takes a series of six photos and keeps the clearest one, saves it to your camera roll. It's the best camera app that I found. But you may know of a better camera app. And if you don't have a favorite camera app, you may want to take a look at the description uh, because there's a link leading to our top 10 photography apps for the iPhone. And granted, some of these applications may also be available on other platforms. So take a look uh, and don't worry, we'll cover your favorite mobile platform at some point in the future. Well, we're, we're not biased on one platform or another, but right now, let's talk to you iPhone owners. Instagram, naturally, we've talked about that in the past. Camera Plus, another one of my favorites. Adobe Photoshop Express, the free version. I actually paid for the $5 in-app upgrade. Don't do it. It was a total waste of $5. Uh, Viddy is another good one. Uh, Photosynth, fun, and that one's for Microsoft. If you didn't think Microsoft was available on iOS, uh, you haven't been watching. Flickr. Tilt Shift Generator. Tilt Shift is kind of nice. Uh, it's a feature that is available in certain applications outright, like Tilt Shift Generator, or Instagram has the ability for you to uh, create Tilt Shift images based on those that you import or take within the Instagram application. It makes the photos you take look like you're taking a photo of a miniature. It's kind of neat. Try the effect if you never have before. Pick Stitch, Postagram, and we've got a few others that we've listed in the article. What is your favorite camera app for the iPhone. Or maybe even I'll ask you back here for Android in case you, someone's saying no Instagram for Android yet. I'm sure it's coming. Uh, for iPhone 3G users, iCamcorder Plus. Very nice. Thank you for the recommendation. Uh, oh, I, I mentioned ClearCam. ClearCam. I think it was 99 cents or something like that. It's, it makes it so wonderful because that's the thing I can't stand. When I take a photo with any camera, I, I don't like blur. I'm not, I'm not happy with blur, so clear cam keeps the blur. That's the number one feature I'm looking for in any camera application. What is the number one feature you're looking for in a camera app? And if you're looking for good camera apps, I told you where you can look. We've got them linked in the description below. Happy snapping. I should have said happy snapping. That would have been a nice way to end that. Happy snapping. Oh, I didn't plus one it. Okay, I'm plus oneing it now. Just like 29 of you did. I gotta get you more, more of you guys to like start using Google Plus. Come on, what are you waiting for? Really? Nothing. You're not waiting for anything. You're waiting for something. What do you? Hang on. What? Huh? This is the problem when I've got like 13 chat rooms to pay attention to. It's going nuts. Uh, 360 Loop Cam, Wow Cam, Glimpse, Action FX, uh, Snapseed. Yeah, see, someone else likes Tilt Shift as well. Clear Cam, $1.99. Okay, so it's two bucks. That's not too bad. Uh, let's go ahead and rock and roll into iDrive, the one stop backup for all your devices and computers. Here we go. Everyone's going to the cloud. Even if you're not there, I'm guessing that something you use is already there. Cloud just can't be avoided. That's this area that's out there in the ether through your ethernet cable uh, that allows you to store things and retrieve things and use things, but it's not locally stored. It's in the cloud. And if you have not yet decided on which online backup service you wanted to use, you might know that uh, you get 25 gigs for free if you sign up on nomies.com, at least with your iDrive account. That's a nice little bonus. And let's face it, even if you already have online storage somewhere else, couldn't you use an additional free 25 gigs somewhere? So based on this, uh, Ron from LockerNome ended up doing a review on the iDrive software, uh, talking really about the safety of cloud computing. And I think this is the, the question I want to ask you. Take a look at the, the link in the description, please. You know, you may find it interesting if you've never heard of iDrive before or you're looking for an alternative for online backup. Do you trust the cloud for backup? That's my question. 
to you and, and to all you know me's, even though I know many of you use iDrive or any other one of these cloud backup services, is it ready? Really? Uh, Jamie Bouch made it home. Great. Uh, oh, Foxy Wolf definitely does trust it. Let's see what the people on the YouTube live feed happen to say. No, it's not worth it. Really? That's kind of a shock that you would say that. Uh, I trust it a lot more than the hard drive on my desk. Brian, exactly. Get the data outside of your vicinity. Put it out there. Yes, you definitely want to make sure it's encrypted and that only you would have access to that data. Uh, but it's just safer out there than it is here. It's just the way it is. Never such a thing as perfect, right? Uh, something could happen here. Something could happen there. But I would say if I was weighing the strengths and weaknesses between both, I would err on the side of cloud pretty much every time. So, what about you? Do you trust the cloud? Where do I go for that contest? It's The link is... It's it. I wish I could physically grab you, shake you, and push your head down right now to look at... There's, there's like a link in the video's description right there. Do you see it? It's down there. It's for the shredder thing. Do you see it now? Do you Can you see... We don't put the links there because we're silly. We put them there so you can click them. Links are clickable. What IRC app is that? This is Colloquy, uh, free for Mac OS X. Uh, you can download the style on nomies.com. Now, let's talk about web analytics. Just for a second. And I'm going to, as we do this, I'm going to load up my Google Analytics account, analytics.google.com. And I should be logged in. Head over to lockernome.com right now, and your, your, your icon, your avatar, whatever, it'll pop up. Oh, not help. I want this one, lockernome.com. This is actually kind of neat. Home, my dashboard, real-time beta. This is actually this is slick. Head over to lockernome.com right now. You're going to love this. So can you see it? Okay, wow, right now, 124 of you guys have come here. Look at that, returning versus new. I love that statistic. This is live, this is in real time. So as you visit lockernome.com right now, it, this number will go up and down. So more of you are joining, look, more of you are visiting a lockernome.com page right now, 127 of you guys, uh, different locations. This is a live real time. So most of you guys are coming in from the US, United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, Brazil, Greece, Germany, Slovenia, Belgium, Egypt, Finland, uh, Japan, Macedonia, Mexico, Norway, and look at that, the number's going up. Oh, I love this thing. Uh, including different traffic sources. So if you guys are coming in primarily from YouTube, look at that, the number one referral, YouTube. That number's going up, I love it, I love it. Okay, so uh, let me get something over here. I'm gonna prop up this computer so we can better demonstrate it. I love, I, I love Google's real-time, uh, I guess, service. So give me a second and we'll start this recording. I love analytics. This is Google Analytics. It's free with your Google account. And if you have a website, you should probably be using some kind of analytics. Google has the ability now to show you in real time how many people are visiting your site, how they're getting there, and if they've been there before ever. So right now, uh, I've got 196 of you visiting LockerGnome.com. If you're watching this video and you visit LockerGnome.com, this number will go up. And I can see that, oh, this is very nice. 60% of you are return visitor. That's awesome. That tells me I've got a very strong community thanks to you. 40% of you are new. That's cool. You're, you're welcome to come back over and over and over again. And then, look at that. The number's going up and down. Come on, guys. Everybody who's watching the video live, jump over. And, and it, what was it? A couple of minutes ago, before I started this video, it was like, you guys, be my be my witness. It was like somewhere around like 120 or something until I said, hey, go here, and your number will pop up. Uh, right? It'll go up. See, it's going up. That's cool. Uh, it's exciting to me. And this is, again, free in, in Google Analytics, which, by the way, used to be Urchin, and I know the team who created this originally. So it tells me 208 uh, right now, uh, most of you are coming from the US, then it's the UK, Canada, Australia, Brazil, Germany, Greece, Netherlands, Norway, Austria, Belgium, Bulgaria, Denmark, Egypt, and Estonia. So uh, it's a pretty, pretty, oh look at that, 
215! God, you guys thought I was kidding. Now let's check out the traffic sources. Let's see where all these visitors are coming from. The number one referral, shocker, YouTube.com. Look at that. And then the second one, the second referral would be direct. So that would be someone clicking on a link in an email or potentially on no web page. They're just coming to look at LockerGnome.com somehow, somewhere. Uh, the next one is organic search results. Like people who search Google, they find Locker Gnome's content. They jump over and they look. And then in terms of content, what are you guys looking at? Well, you're looking at a lot of the content that we created today. 30 of you are looking at uh, our Hackintosh Computers Legal. Uh, then the, the next one, the article that we're talking about right now, Gage versus Google. So Gage, or I should say Gages, uh, was acquired by GitHub, which is a repository for open source software. If you're a developer, you would certainly know about that. Gages has now launched as an alternative to Google Analytics. Not free, there's a seven day trial, but if you're someone who wants something like real time analytics, as well as the ability to see more about which browsers and their capabilities your visitors have, uh, Gages seems to be the leader, at least according to Eddie Ringle, who wrote that article. And then, of course, I'm going to go ahead, as I do every time, because I'm not, I'm not just paying you guys lip service. I hover over plus one and see Kat Shaw, Alex Piero, Sean Jordan, Skylar Johnson, and Stacey Ferris have plus one it. I'm going to plus one it. You could also tweet it and like it. And then I'm going to go back to Google and look at 225 of you are visiting. And I just, I love seeing this number. The fact that 60% of you have been to Locker Gnome before. That means so much to me, and I'm very grateful that Google has this feature. It's real time, it's in beta, it's in Google Analytics, but if you're not a fan of Google and its products, or you just wanna get off of Google's grid, Gages may be a good alternative. Nice, huh? Yeah, United States is still kicking everybody else's tail feathers. Brazil. Brazil only has two people. There's not a lot of people in Brazil, apparently. I don't I don't know why. Hey, I'm not making this stuff up. Speaking of not making it up, backlink of the day goes to creativetech.me. Uh, that's Phil Fernandez, and he's a Nomi, and he was explaining to people what a Nomi is and why you might consider joining. Now, we've got the Nomis back here. You, of course, see that they're part of our live videos now. You know that after today's live broadcast, hey, honey, hey. after today's live broadcast, we're going to be doing something uh, with the Nomis, talking about uh, business failures, really, uh, and you can join us there in the Hangout uh, if you are a Nomi. And if not, you can watch. You can certainly experience the content that we're creating, but if you want to be a part of that discussion, just join us at Nomis.com. Phil explains better than I do why it's valuable to you. If you have a website... You should be a Nomi. Am I, am I kidding, guys? Am I, just tell Am I? If you have a website, shouldn't you be a part of Nomi's? They're subscribers. I, 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 this is, they're endorsing the product. I'm just the one putting it together. So uh, what time is the Hangout again? 8420 asks. Uh, it is pretty much right after we do TLDR. Uh, or you know, somewhere thereabouts, right around uh, 5 p.m., uh, Pacific time. Uh, that gives me enough time in case something else happens around here. The Nomi of the day. Let's go ahead and make it Phil. Phil, that was a great blog post. Thank you so much for your support. Phil is also working on uh, individual shows that could run over live.perillo.com. If you are a Nomi and you want to create a podcast for Nomis or maybe for other people, uh, I'm giving you a chance to reach a wider audience you know, uh, a part of the Locker Gnome audience. And Phil's kind of spearheading the effort of having kind of a Nomi's radio, more content. Uh, and yeah, you could do that on your own, sure, but I'd like to believe we have a few more people that we can drive attention your direction. So uh, there you go. Uh, let's go ahead and pop back over to YouTube. Someone says they wish they could send me cash. What's stopping you? I, I had something way back in the day called the Dollar Challenge. I took money. I've, I've never had a problem taking money. Uh, hang on, let, let me just put this on pause. Honey, are you okay? Yeah, your mom said no, I do not trust the cloud. Mom is, my mom apparently is watching TLDR. Okay, Nomi, say hi to mom. Mom does not trust, why? Here's, the, we, we almost need to, I, I do Wi-Fi, but I was having issues with it the other day. Uh, the, mom and dad need to upgrade their Wi-Fi. You know what? I don't trust their internet service provider more than I don't trust the cloud. <laughs> Slow. Boy, oh boy. It'd be faster to FaceTime with my parents if I hopped on a bike uh, and, and cycled my way to Iowa and talked to them than it would to... Of course, I was exaggerating a bit. Uh, everyone's saying hi, Mom. 
See, most people, you know, they don't they, they don't show their families. I I, I appreciate like uh, like David DeFranco when he shows his family in, in the vlogs. He did. David DeFranco, by the way, he's a part of Nomies. We need more uh, vlogs. Oh, we need more vlog. Oh, who need we need more vlogs? You, are you saying, Diana, that that we need to do a, a vlog for the Nomies? Sure, I'll talk about David DeFranco. Oh. Oh, David DeFranco, apparently Diana wants more of your vlogs. Uh, we should have vlogged what just happened when you just came home. Yeah. So Diana walks through the door, and uh, she walks a little bit, and she says, something smells like poo. And uh, her favorite saying is poo on a shoe. It, it really is. Uh, especially when something happens bad. Isn't it really? It is. And then what happens? She walked in the door, and apparently Wicket or Pixie, we don't know who, I had pooed on the rug in front of the garage door. And so she stepped in it as well, she walked through. When I opened the door, it hit it. So the door swung, so. knocked the poop under the door, and then she was walking. She says, why is there poo here? And I looked at the, I kind of traced it back, and poo on a shoe. Uh, that's why Diana was not here for the first half hour. She was cleaning. And it was, how'd that go, hon? I'm sorry I couldn't do that. I'm sorry. I would. I, we could have swapped places. I would have offered that if you were staged to do this. And I'm not saying it, but I do. Like they do make a mess. We we usually we're kind of a specialty team. We work with each other on things that need to happen. Uh, but the poo needed to be cleaned up. Uh, I'm 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 sure the Nomies are glad we did not vlog that. Yeah. We're thanks for sharing, Chris. Yes, no problem. You want to know what happens when I'm not doing videos about technology? I'm cleaning poo. <laughs> and Diana is cleaning poo as well. <laughs> so, uh, you two are the best couple I've ever seen. Well, he didn't say ever. I threw in the word ever. So Diana just looked at the Kelly Ishikawa's uh, comic of her. That's what do you think? Yeah, cool. Isn't that amazing? You're in a comic. Yeah. Kelly, you did an amazing job. He is the best illustrator I have met this year. I've met a lot of good illustrators, but Kelly, you know, asked, "Hey, can I do uh, comics for Nomies?" And he said, and the idea is that you could submit comic ideas, like strips, and then he would draw them. And it was, I showed it off at the beginning of the, the live TLDR broadcast, told them that they could download it. We, we may have to put the image link in the show notes so you can click it right away so you can get a copy of it uh, if you want. Right? If you're not following me on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google+, MySpace, I don't really do much there. Even Tumblr, you can tumble that image because I tumbled it there. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> you can get the image. Somewhere, somehow. Uh, thank you for the 148 likes. We didn't even come close to 300 to do that cinnamon challenge. Mm. No, it's not going to happen. I, I refuse to do a cinnamon challenge unless I get that 300 likes. The next time I get 300 likes, I think that's the benchmark. I may not mention it again, Yeah. but the next time I get 300 likes uh, for one of these live YouTube videos, then uh, I'll do the cinnamon challenge. You guys are lucky I'm not asking for 300 likes for every video that I upload every day, which I would appreciate, by the way. The problem is, you guys, I, I, well, it's, it's a good problem to have, I guess. You like this video, and then you may not see the other videos that we do, and the, the challenge is we get a lot of dislikes from haters in the community, and I wouldn't consider them as a part of the community, but they're there hating the video for no other reason other than to hate things, uh, and we need more likes. So do not be stingy. With your likes, we appreciate the things that you do and that you share uh, with us and, and, and beyond. My email address, by the way, before I forget, chris at perillo.com. Uh, and let's see here. What do we have? Good Lord. Good Lord. Well, I guess I guess he's good. I don't have anything against him or her. Actually, would that be Lordess? Lord. 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 Oh, Lord. All right, so we did bla neurofibromatosis. I never, I, I could barely trip my way through that word. Uh, we don't really have anything else we need to cover today in uh, TLDR. Um, I think we've 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 pretty much done everything that that I wanted to do. We got our our six videos out. We're trying to keep it to six. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I think let's see if we can uh, turn it over to Nomi's and, and possibly uh, take her on out for the next five minutes or so. And we can end her quickly at, at uh, 45 minutes, which I say is pretty good. If we can make it within an hour's time, I'm generally happy. I'm not, you know, too, you know, stringent on, no, it has to be this long or this long or this long. Uh, but uh, what do you guys think? What do you think? Do you realize, I don't think they realize that they're sharing their email address in front of God and everybody. Oh, Lord. Let's go ahead and open TeamSpeak again. And, oh, I better mute it first. 
Uh, sorry if I'm interrupting anything, guys, but do you guys want to go live on YouTube? Yeah, that's oh, what we're yeah. talking about. Woohoo! Okay, well, welcome. Hey. You're live on YouTube. Hey, how's it going? I would What's say up? it's going well. Do we have any questions from y'all or the community before we do our uh, live Google Plus Hangout for Nomies? Yes, actually, we got um, a couple from a Nomi, a uh, crazy uh, Tika. One of them says... What did your insight before I go look this up? Chris, do you know of a good guide or course to learn to code with Xcode for the Mac? Uh, yes, I do, as a matter of fact. And I, I, I'm not going to announce it right now because I'm working on getting you guys a discount for it. Uh, it's uh, from the same person that I was able to get that 70% discount on the web development series. Uh, he's also got an iOS app development series that's uh, in the works. So uh, look for a discount on uh, a course uh, guided by someone who knows what they're talking about rather than random things you might find on the internet. Oh, that'd be awesome. Well, Very nice. I'm, Another value add. I'm doing the best I can for the, I would say, the true fans of our community. And we're driving towards 1,000, by the way. We're about a third of the way there. That's really good. Uh, any other really questions, though? Um, yes. Um, one of my friends is actually, he's not a know me though but um he is into programming he wants to know what where he wants where he wants to where he should start on does he want to start in java or c what would he what would you recommend depends on what you're doing i mean java is a great programming language i wouldn't say it runs well on the desktop in the java virtual machine but uh you know a lot of scalable server-side applications are on java for a reason it scales well if he's looking to go into enterprise i would say he would be served just as well on either side uh, either uh, with C or Java, uh, probably want to concentrate more on Java. C and, and learning in C is a, is a skill that can certainly translate to other languages uh, with a greater degree of, of ease. Now, not being a developer, this is information that you know I've certainly gleaned from the greater part of the community. There may be developers in the group uh, that might be able to give you a more qualified question. But as again, uh, like I say, with everything, it's relative. Uh, you know, what's it's only going to be good depending on what the person needs. Thank you. Any other questions? It's all about programming. Uh, yeah. Yes, I've got one here from lockernome.net from Schenker Speaks. Will USB mic as the AT 2020 work Chromebooks? I, Most mics will work on a Chromebooks. Okay, there you go. I think the question, and it broke up on my end, uh, something about uh, USB mics working on Chromebooks, and Kevin, you've confirmed being a Chromebook owner uh, that uh, yeah. they do work? Great. They don't really work because you need to be only um, flash drives, mouse, keyboard, I doubt mic. Wait, so they do work or they don't? Don't. Ah, see, I, I thought I heard that they do work, so apparently the answer is no, they don't work. I think Google's got a little more work to do with their Chromebooks. Any other questions from either live.perlo.com, lockernome.net, the live YouTube chat, Nomies? I'm not sure which one came from, because uh, it's a direct question being asked by whoever's in the, uh, the log, but it says, what things would you specifically not discuss on a social networking site? Personal things, like way too personal things. Th uh, you know, data that could reveal things about you that uh, you know, could be used against you. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I would say anything that could be in the area of TMI, uh, and that would probably be an area, I mean, as opposed to talking about things you, you were doing in your house if you weren't recording videos on YouTube, as we kind of did during the live episode. Yeah, I would say a general rule of thumb is if you don't want your neighbor to know about or want to tell your neighbor, you probably don't want to tell the world. I, I boil it down if you don't want to tell your parents or your relatives, don't tell it to the world. I have a policy, and it has to do in general with the internet. If you don't want the entire world to see it, don't post it at all. Assume everything online is public. It's a good assumption. And we got one more. It's kind of long, so I'll make it uh, simple. Uh, what do you think about the implementations of COIN, and will it be uh, a logical economic choice for people that aren't geeky in general? It, the audio keeps dropping. I think you were asking about uh, Bitcoin. Yeah, and how economically plausible it would be to implement to non-geeky individuals. Well, it's definitely, it has a long row to hoe. 
But uh, I like the idea of a centralized system for uh, exchanges of currency, digital currency, real currency. I, I think we're going that way, as I made uh, a reference to with the article that we published about Bitcoin and digital currencies in uh, Locker Gnome this week. The video was uploaded, I'm pretty sure, in another playlist as well. So I pretty much got my thoughts out about Bitcoin uh, already, but do, do any other Gnomies have uh, perspective? I don't, have, I don't know enough about the system to even discuss it, really. Personally, I think it has a long way to go, but I get the idea, and I have a really cool thing, if we can just figure out a, a way to implement it on a mass scale. Uh, Chris, there's actually a question that'd be really good for you to probably answer. How would you decide between a dedicated server or a cloud option like Amazon EC2? You know, I've purchased physical servers in the past and uh, ultimately felt like they were albatrosses. Uh, you know, I, I did not... Uh, if, if I had, As I move forward, I go more with options where I don't actually have to own physical pieces of equipment that I have to keep track of. Uh, and, and really, it's just so much more convenient. You may not have the same level of control, but how much control do you really need? Uh, we rely on Amazon's web services for certain parts of uh, the Locker Gnome universe, uh, and it works well, or at least well enough, and I'm very grateful that it exists. Uh, it certainly saved us money, saved us time, and, and, and given us the ability to scale better, and unfortunately, strapping myself to traditional web servers is just not something that exciting for me. Uh, and, and granted, I am not a server wonk, definitely not a sysadmin, uh, but even those who are appreciate uh, you know, these cloud-based services more than being strapped to one physical machine or another. At least the ones I know. Um, we have a question to you to Masonic Forge. How do you feel about the Magic Mouse as opposed to when you first got it and did the review? Have your uh, opinions changed? I know that some people have a specific problem with the uh, the feet wearing Allergan scruff. What are your uh, experiences for? Yeah, I I'm trying to remember if I liked it or disliked it. I I can't remember. I wasn't used to it, but over time I I begun, I, I love the Magic Mouse more and more and more. I'm still kind of getting used to the trackpad. The magic trackpad, which isn't very magical. I mean, mystical maybe, kind of, but not really magical. It's a yeah, name. Actually, it's a label. I actually got the magic trackpad on Windows right now. Oh, cool. Yeah, it doesn't use all the gestures, but you can do the scrolling gestures and anything with a normal mouse. It works pretty good. I like it more than I thought I would. It's definitely worth the try. Well, thanks, guys, for joining us for the Q&A. Good questions today, I would say. Also, just to follow up on the Chrome, the US mic on a Chromebook, I got a recent update because I just retested this again. They are supporting it because I create, I'm testing it with a Creative Sound Blaster uh, USB sound card. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Well, there's an update. So. Thank you. Uh, you can join the Nomies anytime, day or night, at live.perillo.com. You can join them in TeamSpeak to actually banter back and forth about all sorts of topics. Uh, we're never really on one subject for too long. It just ebbs and flows. Uh, and, of course, we're going to be in that Google Plus Hangout live uh, an hour or so after this uh, broadcast. We're having another broadcast. And now, by the way, we are doing webinars every week. Jerry Hobby, who is a Nomi, a business Nomi, uh, we're going to be doing business intelligence. Almost, uh, not exactly round the clock, but regularly every week. Uh, if you have a business and it's online or you know a small business owner, uh, that's really what we're trying to gear Nomies to. If you have a website, you should be in Nomies. That's bottom line. We're looking to help. And if you don't have a website, eh, don't worry about it. You can get a website. Websites are easy. But what do you do with a website? Well, that's kind of why we're giving the advice that we're giving. Because I've been doing it for 15 or some odd years. A few years, really, are under my belt. <sighs> Oh, apparently we've had three new annual Nomi subscribers in the past hour or so. Wow, that's pretty cool. Not during the broadcast, uh, necessarily, but uh, I'm glad we got annual subscribers because we're shooting for 1,000 within the first year, and we're well on our way. Thank you for joining us here, there, wherever. We appreciate your support, your likes, your shares, your plus ones, uh, and I'm going to say it. Uh, we appreciate you being here. Uh, watching live, maybe not so live. Thank you for the 200 
likes. It really shows us that you care. Thank you, by the way, for the, the visits on uh, LockerGnome.com uh, today. It was uh, really nice to see that overview and seeing that, uh, th well, now it's 49. I'm looking at it again. Uh, it, went back, it went down to 63. That's okay because you guys are looking at other things right now. Uh, but 51 or 50% 50 of you guys are returning to LockerGnome on a regular basis. I would like to see that 51% bar move just a bit far uh, or further, I should say. Uh, like right now, uh, in you know what? I should probably do this every day, give you the update on the Google Analytics. Uh, right now, 69, 54% are returning, 46%. Now everyone's jumping over. Uh, but if, if anything, what I'd be interested in doing is showing you guys the top countries, U.S., U.K., Canada, Australia, Belarus, Belgium, Brazil, Colombia, Croatia, Denmark. That's the top. I'm just going to give the top 10 and, and keep it at that. Uh, but the overview is really nice to see you guys returning to Locker Gnome on a regular basis. So, yeah, I think we'll, we should make that a part of our, our daily routine on TLDR. That's the Locker Gnome Daily Report, which you are certainly now a part of. Thank you for visiting. Thank you for looking. Thank you for sharing. And I hope everybody has a good weekend. We've got one individual video I know I want to upload separately from Hank Wu, a Nomi, who's got a 90-second review of a product that he's had, and uh, that's going to be coming into the Locker Gnome channel. I think you're going to love what he did with it, and I think he may be doing that every week, like a 90-second review of one particular product or another. So uh, thanks again. You can join us wherever you can find me. And I'm assuming you know where I am. And if not, I'm sure you're asking people and they can tell you. Or just Google me. Or head over to our live feed going out over the web 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.